Welcome to Renditor Chronicles Podcast. I'm Ethan Taylor. And I'm Dustin Jelly. Our hope is to inspire new and old hunters alike. We hope you can join us on this journey of lessons that we have, are, and will learn through the world of hunting. Three, two, one. We are live, Dusty. We're live and back at it. Dude, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to stop trying to count the episodes we're on. Um, so anyways. We're in episode eight. Nah, whatever. I was homeschooled, so I, I know how to keep count. Yeah, but what if we do like filler episodes that we just throw in wherever we want? And we don't have that that prerequisite like set in there where it's like, oh, this is episode da da da. I'll figure it out. Yeah, I think this is probably the best place to figure yeah. it out is while everyone's listening. Yes. <laughs> Dude, how have you been? It's been a few weeks since we've gotten together. Yeah, and so, talked. <laughs> so talked last hunting. time, yeah, so last time we were together, we hammered out a couple episodes because I was going to the great state of California. I won't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of the people listening uh, in the Midwest will. We, yeah, will nobody from the everyone Midwest hold your tongue. California and their politics. No, it was uh, it was really good. Um, it was uh, pretty relaxing. I'd say overall, uh, I would say the best part was honestly it was just sunny and nice, and it was beautiful. My kids seriously every day was, Dad, it's only the sun and the moon here. <laughs> I was, we like, like one day I was like, like trying that. to figure out what they were saying, <laughs> and it was like, there's no clouds, there's no rain, there's no snow. I mean, every single uh, day was just cloudless, sunny, and uh, then starlit moon, and that I mean, that was it. So, dude, it was it was nice. really good. Um, one thing I love and appreciate so much about California is the view and the terrain, and it's just like you forget, you forget like being in the Midwest. Like I feel like we're like where we're at right now, how far up north and. With the North Shore on yeah. Lake Superior right there, you think, like when you go up to Canada especially, you think yeah. you have like mountains and hills around you. <laughs> and then you go to play, like California, and we were up in uh, Redding, California, and you just start to see some some land features nice. that are like, will blow your mind, and you're like, this is so beautiful. You know, nice. snow-capped mountains and all that jazz. It's like, this is legit. Nice. So, dude, uh, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good, man. And then yeah. uh, we'll dive into this, turkey hunting. Yeah. I also, since since we last got together, you I know. was able to do at least one hunt. I got out. How are you doing, though? I'm doing good. You know, Sweet, it's, man. It's, uh, now that we're back, I'm really good. Back yeah, and, right? Oh, you know, getting feels good. Caught up again. Feels and, good. Uh, it's been a long time. I missed this podcast. Oh. And, uh, but yeah, I'm doing well. We, uh, The wife and I, we were down in uh, the Chicagoland area for a conference. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, so... Illinois. Not the conference, but yeah. Chicago. <laughs> yeah, Chicago, <laughs> Illinois. It's it's like the Midwest version. Did of you Cal- have your magazine California. locked in a separate compartment from your pistol, and then? Yep. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> Dustin is definitely um, reaffirming that he did have it Ew. locked separately in his car, non-verbally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate the gun laws of Illinois. I like I like Minnesota, oh, Wisconsin is great, and you get to Illinois, and it's just. Yeah, it's a bunch of crap. Dude, it's so, bad. Anyhow. We, we, yeah, I don't think we need yeah. to do it. Anyhow. <laughs> we'll go into that on our concealed carry, yeah. uh, concealed <laughs> carry podcast. We're starting up next week. Oh, man. But yeah, it was good. It was nice to see some friends. Um, we've uh, we've made some friends from the conference uh, that we started going to a few years ago. So it was always nice to see them catch up. Yeah. Um, and it was sunny. Yeah, it was actually nice. really nice down there the whole time. And yeah. So yeah, it was good. It was good semi getaway. We had to take the baby with us, so okay. it wasn't a complete getaway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How old is the baby again? Eight months. Eight months. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, but it wasn't bad. Yeah, he was pretty good. He was pretty cute. That's awesome. Well, I'm sure he appreciated the World of Warcraft um, conference you're at. Anyway, <laughs> shall we move forward? Um, I think the reason we're all here is to talk about hunting. And by we, you mean us and uh, our three listeners. Uh, three million plus. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, I think we're up to like million. six six million downloads yeah. minimum. It's, uh, it's going, it's going spectacular. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got a whole line of gear <laughs> out. So I mean, <laughs> just hit us up if you're looking for uh, that. Um, anyhow, dude. Yeah, turkeys, turkeys, gobble, gobble, gobble. gobble. <laughs> That's embarrassing. That was uh, unplanned. That and was. That was we are children. Yes. Okay, so um, well, let's do it this way, dude. You had your hunting season before mine yep. for turkeys. Yeah. So why don't you tell me about how your hunt went? All right. Um, ground zero. Ground zero. Did I, I don't remember if I covered the the quick little hunt I did with my oldest. 
on the no, previous I don't one. Th- yeah, I don't know. Dude, you may or may not have, but let's know. encapsulate that Just real a quick, quick recap. Yeah. yeah, I took my oldest out for her first turkey hunt ever. I uh, went to this one area that I've been to that I'd seen a flock at last year. Of course, we didn't see anything that day. We, we did see one. We saw one hen three different times, the same darn hen. Yeah, we did talk about this. This is old news to people. Nobody wants to hear this story. But it was a good time. It was a good time hanging out. I'm, <laughs> I, I Hopefully, I might be able to get out with her one more time. She really wants to get a turkey. Um, so, at the very least, I'm pretty encouraged that she she's really enjoyed hunting, getting out. Um, but then... How, how are you getting out one more time? How many seasons do you have? We go till the end of May in Minnesota. Do you have like one... like? You don't like we have six seasons. Yeah. What well, the nice own, thing is I'm again? archery, so I can go the full six seasons, any location, and she's got a youth tag, and she can go any season, any location. I'm it's I, wonderful, I, dude. I'm really hoping that like I'm totally missing something in Wisconsin, and I go learn about that. But I'm pretty sure we just like you can use a. Did you Did you look in the archery? What does archery look like for Wisconsin? Dude, I'm pretty sure we have a rule like so. That sucks. for like rifle season, you can use a bow. Yeah. Pretty sure when I was looking at, because it's like small game regulations, and, yeah. and you can use like caliber down. I forget what they call yeah. it exactly when you do that. You don't have um, like a specific like archery. Archery turkey? No, I don't think we do. Lame. Super lame. Wow, the one area Wisconsin DNR yeah. has created lame rules for Dude. Minnesota actually beats <sighs> out. Wow. That and yeah. Well, the thing is, is that I only have one week. And we anyway, should, we, know, should, let's yeah. <laughs> we should look this up at some point. We will. Yeah. To the Google. To the Google. <laughs> To the Google, to the interwebs. Yeah. So you start your story. So yeah. So went, did that, and then um, I ended up going out a week or two later, and then the following weekend, met up with my buddy Steve Havenstein um, for kind of our traditional uh, hobby game call turkey hunt weekend. Uh, went down Friday uh, Friday morning, took out, headed down to towards the Mille Lacs area. And I uh, met up with Steve, and we ended up going out that morning when I got down there, early afternoon. We didn't really see anything. Didn't didn't really expect to. Hit up a couple different areas, more so some kind of like scouting and really just hanging out. And uh, had a good time. We came back Friday night, and um, we ended up having a couple uh, nephews of one of our other buddies, John. His nephews came and joined us Friday night, and they're... 15 and 17 and uh both of them hadn't gotten a turkey either and you know i'm going year three without a turkey and so how long have they been hunting turkeys oh, they've been hunting turkeys for like six years so oh okay <laughs> yeah not not quite as bad all right yet. yeah yeah uh, no no i I'm, I'm not my position wasn't as bad as theirs but all right uh the one kid hadn't even heard a turkey gobble so, like, I can't imagine going six years without even ever hearing a turkey gobble. Dude, mad respect for him for going out for six yeah, years, you know, honestly. When you're a teenager, you're, you're stupid. You don't realize. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> yeah, we just went into that. Yeah. Okay, anyway, go continue. So, so, so we, we got all set up, and uh, we had made a game plan the night before was we were going to go to this one spot Saturday morning that was a really good spot. It was a really hot spot that we've been at historically for early morning hunts. A lot of turkeys. And the game plan was, since I was going out with a recurve, because I like making difficult things even more difficult. Dude, we have... Hold on. Pause. Oh. Pause. We haven't even we haven't even dude, talked about the have dude, we? Dude, pause. Everyone, we're oh, on a tangent. Let's back up. So... Uh, first of all... Yes. Dusty. Did I call it or did I call it? The moment you got a trad bow, what a traditional bow, yeah. what did I say was going to happen? You said I was gonna go full trad, full trad, and, and you're you, gonna your I knew your compound was gone. Yeah, because you love making life difficult. I do like making life difficult. That's why you're what my is friend. It, masochist? Is that the people who like yep. doing self harm? Yep, yep, I'm you're masochist. masochist. Yeah. So for those of you of you who aren't aware and seen my uh, oh, my journey on social media, so bad. I uh, I got a you know a trad bow back in March for fun. And oh yeah, just for fun. It's just, just for gonna fun. Be, it's gonna be a side thing. Yeah. Well, once you do one drug, you you know, just got to go to the harder drug. Yeah, apparently, gate, gateway. Yeah, the compound was gateway, and I actually just enjoyed the oh the, the treadmill <laughs> so much, and oh. I was just shooting that. And there's one day I realized as I walked down in my basement and looked at my my compound bow, and it just it felt dead to me. 
Dude, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I, I just, you know, you, was, ha- you had the dead. audacity. The audacity and, to uh, go. Oh, um, when you're, we talked about this already, and we're going into it again. Well, you, when you're, when you're stalking with a trad bow compared to a compound, it's so much hey, more alive. Uh, and that's not stalking, just holding it, just oh. holding it. It's like a piece of wood. I don't alive. disagree, dude. I don't and disagree just, that it's cool. Yeah. But it's like then sell every single gun you have if it's that cool. Uh, <sighs> judgment coming from you. Yeah. Can I can I finish no, my story? I'm with, I'm with you. I think it's cool. <laughs> I just don't think it has to be the coolest. I just I was just describing to you my experience. Oh gosh. Okay. And you're hating on me. Okay. So yeah. you have this hunk of metal. So I have or this hunk of dead metal down in that's your basement. Dead to me. You just I, I, if you if I remember right, you 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 snip the cords on it. Yeah, and, and you it's just burned it. it. Yeah, yeah no. you, you melted <laughs> it down. So so I ended up like you know what I want to upgrade. So I sold that recurve because it was like only thirty five pounds. I was like I want I want to get one that's a little little higher poundage. So I ended up getting a ch- kind of a cheap takedown recurve, and I was just like you know what, really really enjoying this. And then that's when I ended up coming across. A couple of weeks out before turkey season on eBay, a guy was selling a Black Widow recurve. Pretty much, and I I'd, I'd looked at Black Widow bows and I'd seen them like, and I knew someday I was going to buy one because I love how they look, and I'm a total diva and I have no problem in it. The hipster in me loves the aesthetics of things, and I love. And that's why, yeah, Dude, I love the aesthetics. Everyone knows you love it because the way you said. A black widow. A black widow. Dude, I'm I'm throwing yeah. shade at you today. Continue. You are the heat. But I, I love and I love how black widows look. I think they look really cool and they're they're really high end bows. The problem is they're twelve hundred dollar bows. And so I figured I'm not gonna be able to get one of those for a while. Well, I ended up finding a really, really good deal on eBay. I found one that was practically brand new. The guy was gonna sell it for six hundred bucks. So I knew at that moment, well, the compound was uh, gone, <laughs> and the uh, Black Widow was uh, was coming to my house. So oh. I, I I fully committed. Two weeks out from turkey season, I fully committed to this whole recurve trad bow thing, and uh, got the got the Black Widow in, getting that dialed in, and which have you, you haven't even seen it yet. Dude, I haven't had the pleasure. Uh, it's a beautiful dude. Piece honestly, of work. I'm 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 it's joking art. around with you. I'm pretty excited to yeah. to try it, and it's, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. But it's it's art. It may not and, alter my uh, life. The the problem was, you know, so I switched to yeah. We'll I'll get to that. You know, long story short, switching to traditional Full from traditional. compound a month out doesn't own doesn't even own a compound anymore. Yeah, I don't. Um, I I actually give you kudos. It's it's gonna be a grind. I fully committed to the struggle stick. So you finally get after three years, you finally get a deer with the compound. Yeah, and I'm now like, one and done. Sold it. Boom. That was easy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 I have this recurve. Um, you know I've been I've been shooting it every day, and so we so back to to the hunt. Yes. You know, so we get, we wake up early Saturday morning. We we get out to the spot. Um, we get set up and so we were along this one trail line and we're, you know, 10 yards into the woods behind some cover and there's me about 10, 15 yards off to my right is the 15 year old. And then, um, uh, my buddy Steve's behind me and he's doing the calling and the 17 year old is behind us facing the opposite way. So in case the turkeys decided instead coming down the trail and coming through the woods, uh, he would have a shot. And uh, so it was all set up, and Steve started calling that morning, and, man, we were hearing tons of gobbles. I mean, the toms were abundant. We had, like, 8 to 10, a couple hundred yards to the west of us. There was, like, one or two to the south of us. There was a couple to the north. I mean, it was just, like, like money, money that morning. I mean, it was beautiful sounds of gobbles. Everywhere, so he's calling for a while, and then we start hearing the the ones a couple hundred yards to the west of us. We hear them come down, and a little while later, we can hear uh, two toms coming in. They're getting closer, and so we we had set up a decoy on the trail, and so Steve's calling them, and you know they're they're responding. They're getting closer. They're getting closer, and then after a little bit, all of a sudden, I look over and I see 
these two toms about 20, 25 yards coming down the trail. And I was just, and that's when the you know blood starts pumping. And it's like, yeah, I start, start doing some box breathing to, to calm the nerves. And just, I'm getting excited because I'm like, yes, we got these birds coming in. I'm going to get a shot opening morning. Um, we have the decoy set up like 10 yards. Like, this is going to be money. This, uh, one of these birds is mine. And they're getting closer. Now they're like, probably 15 yards away down the trail and just no i'm I'm just i'm pumped like i'm like yes like because my buddy steve last year we had a decoy but it was a cheap one and it kept scaring the birds away so now he went out and got a um avion x bird this year and those things are legit and these birds are coming in and they're coming in hot and i'm just getting pumped i'm getting more and more excited the closer they get and all of a sudden boom the fifth year old blew a shot off out of nowhere. Like, no, like, just, just, just shot. And, uh, so is this all predetermined who was shooting when and how? Yeah. So out? we had set it up to where, like, oh, sorry, I forgot to share that. Like, we had set it up where I, since I was shooting the bow, I got first shot. And if I missed or if they wouldn't come in to like 20 yards or closer, we just let the, the, the kids with the shotguns go after it. And so the plan was to let the birds come in, let me get a shot off. And then if I missed, or if they weren't coming close enough, the 15-year-old or 17-year-old would take a shot. But nope, he, uh, he, he decided uh, preemptively that he was taking a bird. And I'm not going to lie, I was livid. Like, I mean, just raging inside. Like, I, I almost went off like, yeah, it was oh, a good man, thing. I, like, hope, I hope they listen to this podcast. Uh, yeah, I, they don't. Dude, you were if through your text <laughs> messages. I could, I could, I could feel how salty. Just, I the, the text salty messages of, of, I had, I had my bird stolen from me. Yeah, someone stole my bird. Yes, yeah, so you're like what? Um, and first, I was just like, first, first thing that came to mind was, are you on public land? Because that's not possible. <laughs> and I was just livid. And thankfully, thankfully, he he actually got the bird. And otherwise, if he had missed, that would have been even worse. And so I spent the first half hour like faking, being super excited and happy for the kid. You know, it's his first turkey. <laughs> and then once, after about half an hour or so, once the mature Dusty like regained control, like I realized, okay, listen, he's 15. He got excited. And he kept talking about how he saw the birds look over in our direction and thought they were just going to take off. And he pulled the trigger. So, <sighs> so once, once I got over that initial... Uh, adrenaline dump of rage. You know, I was I was genuinely happy for him. He got his first turkey. It was a nice little turkey. It was we got some pictures. I was I was really happy. You know. So and then then you know I was able to Joe Steve and I joked the rest of the week and about about that whole incident. Uh, so he kind of he was yeah he kind of Steve like, Steve was even even like super surprised and thought like, uh, uh, Steve Steve told me later he's like I thought you were gonna murder him he's like he's like that trad bow <laughs> is super loud dude yeah. <laughs> so so we, we we get the turkey we get it back to the truck which wasn't too far away throw it in the the bed and then we we head on out again and we head further down this one area where we kind of figured the turkeys were. The rest of that flock we had heard were, were working their way towards um, or had set up in this field that we had been at um, the previous years. We've had good action there and set the decoy up, and Steve started calling away. And uh, 15, 20 minutes later, we had a Tom, a lone Tom, come uh, strutting up over the hilltop, and he sees that, that decoy and just, just gets all fanned out and is just... Looks like he's going to start coming in hot. And I was just like, yes, another opportunity. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he just like stops dead in his tracks and is like, eh, I don't know if I want to come any further. God, and and I think what happened was the we had the 17-year-old who was set up to my right this time. I think he had moved. And unfortunately, we, we didn't think about his location, but he was set up like right in the line of sight of the turkey, the decoy, and then him. So I think he moved his, his shotgun or something to adjust, and that was enough for that turkey to be like, meh, nope. Turns out turkeys have super good eyesight, everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's so frustrating. We're definitely not noobs. No. Uh, turns out they have super good eyesight. Yeah. We'll get into Granted, that. Granted, I would too if I ran my whole life scared of everything I saw move. <laughs> <laughs> 
So he he decided, you know what, I'm I'm gone, and he ended up taking off, and um, so we tried to hit him a few more spots that uh that day didn't didn't see anything, um went back, you know we we ended up cleaning up that turkey for the 15 year old, and then and, oh just see yeah. them see them yeah, and then of course it was hard watching as he's trying to like clean this thing and and get the breast meat out like. We realized halfway through the knife he was using was like dull as a butter knife because he's just like hacking away at the breast and, and it's just like oh my gosh like we need to get you a better knife and so they ended up taking off that night and so which I was kind of glad you know happy for him you know happy to see what he got and glad to see him leave you're like it's my time yeah it's my time <laughs> so we ended up uh, going out Sunday morning. Uh, we went back to the that same uh, wood, wood line that we were at the morning before, and we set up in a different location, set the decoy out, and uh, set the decoy a little a little south of me. And the plan was, my buddy Steve was going to uh, work on calling the turkeys in, because we had heard a couple kind of to the northwest of us, a couple to the south, and we figured the ones from the northwest would most likely be the ones that would come in. So he was calling away, calling away, and I was set up behind this tree, kind of with my back to the tree, and we're not hearing anything, not hearing anything after a while. I was getting to the point, I was like, man, actually, is anything even coming in? And all of a sudden, like, wait, did I, did I just start hearing some clucking? I'm just hearing a cluck, 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 cluck. And so I let out a few that clucks. That was super good. You that was really good. Yeah, that was lame. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so I let out a few clucks myself. And sure enough, yeah, there's this, there's a hen who's like, I'm guessing 15 yards behind me. Yeah. And so we start clucking and start talking back and forth. And all of a sudden, next thing you know, like as I'm leaning up against this tree and I'm clucking, all of a sudden, all of like my peripheral vision, she's like three, four feet from me. Are you kidding? Yeah. I was oh, just, you are kidding. Okay. No, I'm not kidding. Oh. Like she literally was like three, four feet away from me. I'm like, wow, shoot. And then uh, I don't know if she saw something she didn't like or not, but then she like slowly started walking back and we're still clucking. And then she, I heard her get to about 15 yards behind me. I'm like, and then I just let out, you know, full on call. And all of a sudden I hear like five to six, <laughs> just like 15 yards behind me. I was like, what in the world? Like where these things come from? Like they never responded to any of the calls before. And all of a sudden I just have tons of what I thought at first was Tom's, but it turned yeah. out it was just a, a, a flock of Jake's with this hen. Yeah. And so I was like, oh my gosh, here we go. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay taking a Jake. Like, I just want to get a bird. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so they're 15 yards, and they're, like, right at this trail entrance, and so we're calling them. But the, those darn birds, instead of just coming down the trail like a tom would, the scared little jakes decide to, like, come down, but on the opposite side of the trail in the woods. So I can see them clearly, but they never came into an open uh, lane of, of sight so I could get a shot off. I mean, they were like 10 yards from me, 15 yards the whole time. And they came down near the decoy, and then after a while, they're like, yeah, we've had enough, and they just kind of mosey on out of their way. So you, they were within that range. but They, they, they were within the range. I just, yeah, there's yeah, there brush and, and woods and just enough underbrush that, like, I never had a clear shot. Never had a clear shot. That must have been so, oh, so frustrating. Yeah. And so, like, I ended up trying to, like, take off and try to cut them off, but I couldn't figure out where they ended up uh, going to. I think they cut through the woods out into a different field later. So, so my buddy Steve and I, uh, we ended up moving to another spot. We heard one one gobble in this field, and we set up, and after half an hour or so, we weren't able to hear anything. Nothing was coming in. So I was like, you know what? It's a mid morning, like let's around nine o'clock or so or ten o'clock, I don't remember. We're like, let's go get some breakfast. You know, we're both hungry. Um, let's get some breakfast. So we go out, we go to a cafe, get some breakfast, and we're like, Well, let's go uh let's go drive by a few areas near here and we'll see if we can see anything or hear anything. And then so we take off and like a mile down the road, we're passing this field and all of a sudden, we're just both like, what? And there's this this flock out there, and there's like five, six toms just strutted out. And we're like, what? <laughs> so quickly make a U-turn, come back, and we're checking them out. We're like, that is a, 
Bro, I mean, did you onyx the, the... And so we onyxed it. Boom. And it said it was county, and we we're, were, were trying to figure out, though, is it huntable land? Like, it was outside of city limits, but we're like, okay, it's county land, but is it huntable? And we went back and forth for, like, 15 minutes trying to figure this out. And um, we were able to get some clarity. And uh, and we figured out, okay, it's huntable. <laughs> and, uh, and so, so we make this that, I, that's I'll, really good. And Steve's like, I don't, I don't think he's like, I don't think we can. There's no way we can sneak because it's this field, but it's got some rolling hills and it's got some um, some oak trees. And Steve's like, I don't think we're able to do it. I'm like, I'm putting a stock on Steve. And he's like, you're, he's like, you're serious. I'm like, yeah, I'm totally gonna go stock him. And, uh, I, I've been living for this moment because. I mean, you've had a trad bow for up to. I've what, had a trad three bow for at yeah, this point. For, so you've been yeah. living for this moment for up to three days. I'm, I'm, I'm more so talking about putting it on a stock. Okay, or fair something. enough. Fair enough. You jerk. I know. Ah oh, man. Throwing so, shade tonight. Yeah, I know. He's feisty. What <laughs> happens when you come back from California? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Liberals coming out. So, so like, I'm super pumped. I'm like, yep, I'm gonna go put a stock on. And so we're we're parked probably couple hundred yards away and they're sitting kind of down on this downhill on this one side so i get out of the truck run down this one part of the hill start like crawling across the hill on my knees and then i get about 100 yards away or yeah probably be like 75 50 and like and then i gotta start bear crawling and uh we was got your, was your heart racing at this point oh, or dude, not my heart, yet? well my heart was racing because i'm trying to get over to these birds before they get into the tree line Fair as enough. fast as i can yeah, without like being totally obvious um and this is where i will say i will say it was so much nicer having that trad bow and all of like three pounds it weighs versus the 10 pounds that my stupid matthews uh, i have no quarrel with that sir <laughs> trying to stock with a with the with a full pound yeah is like especially the one that i'd set up this year that oh. matthews monster wake was a beast Dude. Uh, between how big that was and then the stabilizers like i was i was really glad to have that trad bow because it was like i could hold it one hand the whole time and never got tired um it was it was it was really nice that's and, legit. And, Conti- and, and so so my buddy he, Steve Steve's actually recording this uh, from the truck. And so we got the I got we got the full video out on YouTube. Venator um, Venator Chronicles on YouTube. Yes, we go check some, it out. We, it is we'll continue to put some in the field videos as yeah, we acquire cause, them. <laughs> Cuz there's there's one point in the video where like I start crawling up this little hill line and I didn't see it till I, later when I watched the video. But apparently, the turkeys actually had turned from like walking from like west to east to like coming up north, and so they're coming up the same hill line on the other side. Yeah. And Steve from the truck could see he hauls me hear him talking like, "Oh, there's turkey. Oh no, oh no, Dusty. I think they see him. Oh no." Dude, his commentary is great. <laughs> it that. is. It's a great comment. You got to go watch the video. Uh, it's so much better. Because cause I didn't see it when I was down there. I thought it was, I thought there's still more contours, you know, east to west, yeah, or west to east, yeah, and didn't come up north. And well, they were, and well, they, they must have saw just enough movement to where they didn't freak them out. But they just started, they turned and started walking south. And so I was able to get up to the top of this hill line, which there was an oak tree that I was shooting for. I was able to get around. And I'd seen at one point the birds were about 30 yards away. And they, they every once in a while, they'd look my direction and be like, what's going on over there? And then they'd go back to eating and walking, and they weren't too concerned. And So I'm crawling up. I, 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 I army crawl my way up behind this oak tree. I'm looking out, and I see uh, the flock about 30 yards away. And I'm like, yeah. So I quickly not, not, not an arrow, and uh, I get up to my knees and draw back and uh, set my sights on this one bird, pull back, get anchored, and clicker goes off. And boom. Way too short. <laughs> like way too short? Yeah, probably like three yards do short. You, do you have like a range finder? Uh, Are you doing any of that? Uh, no, I'm doing a totally like instinctual, like because I don't need a range finder because I'm just learning how to judge um, distance. So now here's here's the thing though. But, here's, here, but let, let shut up. But let me tell you. But <laughs> let, it, it's it's totally different. Like it's totally different. Like I actually found that I don't need a rangefinder for unless you're shooting at an animal. Like what for, for, for with the recurve? It, it, it's a totally different game. Go ahead. Yeah, and explain. I'm I waiting for the explanation. We'll, we'll just have to go out and do it, and you'll see. Well, it. No, I I this is where okay. So let's pause on this for a second. So. 
Here's the thing. What, what how am do I? You, how do you? How do you? How do I aim? No, I, I understand the concept of aiming with a trad ball. Thank you. A trad stick, a struggle stick. <laughs> um, no, I, I get that. Okay, so we're going from a bow that is arguably, and I genuinely do want to know your thoughts on this. Yeah. Um, we're going from a bow that is genuinely, I would argue, like less efficient, less ethical, generally speaking. Totally. And then we're introduced, which is okay. But then when you have a compound bow, we're like, yeah, we gotta have a range finder. Yeah. But now we're going to a trad bow, and I get maybe if every shot is like ten yards or less, maybe I guess. Yeah. I get the idea of like like estimating yards. Yeah. I tried estimating yards with my bow and just being off a few yards like screwed it up for me. Yeah. And so, wh- how are you justifying that in your mind of like? Oh, not only am I going to a bow that is less efficient for yeah. killing, just in general, yeah. which is fine. I think it's like yeah. fine to, to totally introduce is. a challenge to yourself. Yeah. But how do you um, balance the ethics with that? Where like all of a sudden now it's like, okay, well, because I'm using a trad bow, I'm also going to start just judging yards. Yeah. When it's even more critical, I would argue. Like it makes, because it's, yeah. it's traveling well, so it's, much it's slower. So much, well, I, it's, it's a different firing system to where i found like i can judge like with the with the compound it's much more of a st- well it's dynamic obviously it's a, it's a more static in a way and because of the the precise measuring devices we have with with the with the um the sites we have, we can we can dial it in, and like okay. I can actually dial my scope into that exact yardage. Sure. So, so I'm using a rangefinder and that scope d- dial to precisely calibrate. Versus going to a recurve, what I have found like now I'm just judging um, that distance and where I need to aim based off of how I know that arrow flies. But. I don't know. Here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. Why wouldn't you just do that with the compound? What's that? What would be the difference of just doing that with the compound? Because how how I'm shooting right now, and it might change. There's there's various aiming methods that I need to explore. Right now, it's just purely instinctual. It it wouldn't matter if I even if I measured it out, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. Why? It wouldn't change because like I'm using the instincts, like the subconscious calculations of my brain. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I know you're going to reference this is, Aaron this, Snyder. Um, this is but such a... L- just, no, but r- just <laughs> hold on. Bear with me. Um, there's things I can do. You're a so bear like, to deal with. Yeah, I am. Dude, bear. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it just... Anyway, I'm not going to go into the, the other meaning of bear. Uh, anyways, uh, there's also the side of it where it's like, I can pull out my pistol, and yeah. I can instinct- instinctually shoot very yeah. well. But there's a very important but purpose of having the sight. And but at the end, but hold on, I'm not okay. done yet. I can point and shoot as if I'm pointing with my finger, right? Yep. Where it's just like you actually practice just doing your instincts, trusting your instincts. Yep. But that's because there's certain times where that's required. Yep. Where it's just like it has to be instinctual. And yep. so you want to just like be able to pull it out, shoot, point and yep. shoot. But if if you can, and this is like <clears throat> I know this is way deeper because we're talking like human level here, right? Yeah. Where it's like if you can be as quote unquote ethical or as efficient as possible, mm-hmm. you're going to want to be. Yep. So why is why is it different? Like why wouldn't you just take your sight off your compound bow and just go, oh well, I'm doing it instinctually now. Why is that? I don't understand you why can. it's different. You can. Yeah. I, I know mean, some people that why, do. But I don't understand why it's different now and it wasn't before. Cause it's still the same instincts, is it yeah. not? Yeah, but the the system's also different. Like you're under like a lot of constant tension. With that recurve, um, you you know your range find before you pull back, right? What's that? You do the range finder. Before. Yeah, no, no, I get that, but like, the, it's shooting the recurve. I found it's very different than shooting at a compound. Yeah, I, I yes, I yeah. agree, I agree. So, but I don't. But I also mind you, I have a freaking month under my belt. <laughs> okay, so but, so and that's I what, have a freaking month. Okay, so that makes it even more interesting to me yes. because it's like we're this is where I'm thinking like mm-hmm. okay, so if we're saying we care about ethics yep. and we care about this and that, yep. I'm all for introducing new challenges to yourself, yep. right? And obviously, I would trust that you look at something and you go, "I'm just not going to shoot that far." Yeah. I don't care what the yardage is. I can just tell that's too far for me, yep. right? Because yep. I can do that with a compound bow. Yep. 
But what's interesting to me and what's different, and I don't understand why, is I don't like that's still important because at home you're probably pacing 10 yards off, are you? Or no, you're just going and guessing. Uh, I'm going and guessing. Okay, so when you tell me 10 yards, you just is roughly 10 yards. Well, I know where my 10 yards are, but I'll, I'll, I'll shoot other, other distances as well. Okay. I won't just always go 10. Okay, so target practice. That's one thing, mm-hmm. and that's cool yep. because there are. I think there's circumstances that require that, like where mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to range find, and you do need to use your best judgment. Yep. But you can kind of tell when something's in, like a. So why is it that now we're not just going from a? Because I'm like going a off the. Fl- I'm going off the arc of the arrow. That's what I'm going off right now. Yeah, but the arrows. Because I can bow. see it. Yeah, but I can see. It, but I know where where that arrow needs to arc, and I can actually watch that arc, whereas I can't with a compound. I'm going to say this as nicely as possible. Apparently not. Three yards short. I love you, Dusty. I'm not trying Dude, to... Be, I'm, I'm being... Gen- I'm like, I'm... I could... This is... It's, fast. So, so, it's honestly fascinating. So, so, you had, so you had a rangefinder and a modern compound bow. Yes. And was in 20 yards and you almost still missed a deer. Imagine if I didn't... So, imagine... Like, so yeah, I, think, then, I so, think we're... So I think we're <laughs> Exactly to your point. I this, think we're, we're, we're playing we're, to my just, point. Exactly. Exactly. Is that it's it, why, imagine if why I, do you do why did you choose to go from a gun to a bow? Like you enjoyed the challenge. But I'm gonna use but like you are you're, you're like somehow but, imagining. but the range the range finder wouldn't have helped me because I don't have a particular aiming device I'm using in, in relation with that range finder to be precisely be like, okay, I need this at this to be able to get this distance. Like I have to kind of know like Roughly how far away, and I know where that arrow needs to arc. Okay, that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so I digress. All right, that was a good conversation. Uh, that was a good though. conversation. I enjoyed that. Oh, hopefully, everybody enjoyed our argument and didn't feel too awkward there. Oh my gosh, not <laughs> at all. That was good. That was I, good. I mean, we can't agree on everything. No, we're gonna we're gonna get in some good. Fights. Anyway, Dustin doesn't care about animals' lives. I don't. Just wants to challenge himself. No That's lives it. matter. <laughs> Moving on. I'm an equal opportunist for oh all God. all animals. Everyone being injured. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, so first so arrow, three yards three short, yard short. So I knock another arrow. Finder. Don't need okay. a range finder. <laughs> hey, I, I ranged it off later. It was, thir- it was like thirty one yards. So, um, and then the second arrow, I send another arrow because I that that first arrow hit and the turkeys were like, meh. What was that? Pause. Uh, pause. Did you practice at thirty? I yards? have practiced at thirty. I was not comfortable going beyond thirty. I will tell you that. Um, uh, it was thirty one. How do you had a range finder? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm gonna let you tell your story. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, so, 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 second, okay. so I'll get back to some thoughts on that that 30 yard range. So second arrow, knock that, pull it back, send it. Now I'm like two, three yards too too far. <laughs> <laughs> Did it move? Did the yeah. turkey move? Uh, the turkeys were like, what's that? Uh, whatever. Okay. They just didn't care. Like that was a flock of turkeys. That was just like, man, we're super chill. Well, that's actually super cool. It was nice, yeah. That's nice, yeah. So, so then they start walking, and now they start getting on a range, and I wait for them to get kind of down this little hill area, and I start army crawling over to the next tree. I get behind the next tree, which, you know, is 30 yards away because they're at around this tree, and now I see the birds, and and they're about, tw- they're about 20 yards away this time, which, which is totally subjective because none of us have any clue. Which I, I, I know the difference between 20 and 30. I, like, I know. I'm giving you a hard time now. Oh, man. And uh, so so I p- grab my arrow. I pull back, and uh, I send the arrow flying. Perfect distance. I'm off to the right. No. <laughs> and here's so... Was here's, your left to right good on the other two? What's that? Was your left to right yeah, good on the other yeah, two? Yeah, it was good. And here's, here's my thought on why I was off to the right. Okay. So there was three birds... And I was trying to pick which three birds. And there's two birds that were kind of like behind the third one. Um, and so I was like, I was trying to decide. And so I picked the bird to the left. So I was aiming at the left. But I don't, here's the problem. I don't think I was actually concentrating hard enough on that particular bird. And like almost in a sense, I was subconsciously, I was splitting the birds. Because like that arrow hit like almost like directly between the two birds. Dude, and and I've never ever... This is sarcasm. I've never ever um, shot at a flock of d- ducks and totally missed, you know, a huge With number of yeah. birds all right there. Yeah, because <laughs> I just didn't pick one. Yeah, so, so, so what I you definitely can't relate. Is what did, I'm trying to did say. You not, did you not range find the ducks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet you didn't range find those oh. suckers. <laughs> 
I will say, I will say, when I went out duck hunting, I brought my binoculars, and they were like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> but I will also say in my defense that everyone was super stoked when I was able to like tell what was coming from super far away. They're like, I'm really glad you brought those. Uh, anyhow, <laughs> back to the turkeys. So, and, and so at the so I, that's why I think I missed that because I wasn't actually aiming at that like enough focusing on that one particular bird, and I split the two, which was really frustrating. Cause, like it was like perfect distance. Yeah. Uh, which I most most of the time I've practiced. I've twenty yards has been. Uh, I practice a lot more. Roughly twenty, 20 yards. Um, yeah, roughly twenty yards. Um, but then it was at that moment the sad reality kicked in that I was out of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> you had three, year, three, arrow I had three arrows, and they're all gone. And uh, riddle and then, me, riddle me this. <laughs> I bought your five arrow quiver. Yeah. And then you decided somehow that your trad bow only needed a three arrow quiver. Well, it has a five arrow quiver, but only had three broad hits at the time. Oh, to shame. Yeah. So well, now we got a whole bunch, so, don't we? By that time, I realized, like, uh, like, oh, that was, uh, I'm sad now because then, then I saw the turkeys just slowly walk off into you the woods. You didn't belly crawl and go get your arrows and, and disappear. Well, at that no. time, they were in the woods and long gone because the woods was like the wood line there. Yeah. There was uh, private property, so yeah. I was, I was. Out that of must have been so awesome. What would you say would be like the what? Like, what was the biggest lesson you took from Dude, that? So rangefinder few, or <laughs> no? Actually, I would have. Uh, not bother with the rangefinder. Like that really, we we need to go up sometime and, and shoot with a recurve, and Dude, you'll see what I'm talking I, about. I, I've even shot. Honestly, I've shot with like kids bows, and there's something so satisfying about just going by feel. You're like, oh, I am. Oh, shooting. I a am kid's a bow. caveman. This is great. Yeah. I, <laughs> no comment. Yeah, we're done. Uh, something satisfying about you shooting a kid's bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. So no. So actually, it took some some lessons away. One. I realized that when I stock, uh, binoculars need to come off, and I have like this little like you on your belly, drop right? leg uh, okay. pouch that I wear. Yeah. Um, on my leg, that I realized that yeah, because I, I was army crawling, so I realized like anything outside like a pocket needs to come off because that stuff was getting hung up and it was getting so annoying. Yeah. But I've never put on a stock before. Yeah. Uh, so that was a good lesson. Two, I think probably one of the bigger ones was. I really wish I had slowed it down once I got to that first tree. Like I, I was, I moved at a good pace to get to that first tree because I knew I needed to get there. But once I got there, got the turkeys in sight, especially having that recurve. Yeah, I wish I had slowed things down, um, both in overall speed, even even when it, when aiming too. I wish I had taken a little more time. But I think, I, and, and this kind of plays in the sec, another lesson, which I think I, instead of trying to shoot at 30, because again, we could talk about ethics, part of it, just functionally too, why not try to get closer? You know, why that's, not take that little bit more time? Why dude, not that's wait? so hard. Why not, like, why not, why didn't I just let them get a little further down, yeah. get into that one tree line? Yeah. And then. Now I have them at twenty, maybe fifteen. Dude, that is that is such a struggle because, like, I, was, I, I remember was so jacked though. I was like, I was just pumped because I was dude. just heart, yeah. the adrenaline's going, yeah. and like, I was like, yeah. I was pumped that I even got to within thirty yeah. yards of them. I was like, yeah. Well, this this is I think it, I don't know if we went into this like on the first episode or the second episode or something like that, where I stocked. So first we were we were leaving a, like a weekend long deer hunt right yeah and we had just had our bows and we we're basically just planning on like sitting in the mornings on the ground and then like see if we can spot and stock yeah and we were literally leaving like i had my i had my uh my um my release on and i told my buddy i was like dude you need to wear your release like we're leaving but we're leaving like three hours early so if we see something we're getting out and there's all these open areas and i mean you see deer all the time yeah and so we saw these deer off the side of the road. We pulled over the truck. I get out of the truck. I'm going to condense this as much as I can because it's to a point about what you were just saying. And we get out of the truck, and I the one thing I didn't keep on me was my range finder. <laughs> and um, I that. know, like in my mind, I'm going, I know this distance. I yeah. know this distance. I know this distance. And um, – I overestimated the distance by like three or f- three or four yards, so I must have. Uh, so on top of me not actually hitting the deer because it went like an inch above the deer's spine, and so obviously three oh, yards is going to make that here. big of a. 
dude. High shots. Yes. <laughs> so, um, but the so then after that deer ran, I was I was like I think it stopped because it went over this hill and I didn't see it reappear. So I was like I'm gonna go put a stock on. So I walked at this deer for like an hour and a half or something, just step by step, never stopped. I was out in the open. The deer was literally just looking at me, and I had the bow like the arrow knocked. My release was on it, and that's what you're saying is exactly what happened to me. I didn't have my rangefinder, and I'm going. How close do I need to get before I'm sure? Mm. How close mm. do I need to get? Yeah. I kept like inching and inching and inching. And then a car drove by that was like 200 yards. And my buddy didn't pull the truck off the road. <laughs> and so he honked. And then the deer took off after like an hour and a half of stalking this deer. And I was legit within uh. like, I was within 30 to 30, uh, 35 to 30 yards of this deer. And I wanted to get like to like 20. Yeah. And it's like I'd been just like foot after foot, like moving yeah. like a sloth. Just trying to move it on this deer, and yeah. it would watch me and snort at me, but it wouldn't run away. And so I was just like, just battling with that yeah. thought of like, why not closer? Because it's like you don't know what you can get, like you don't yeah. know what you can squeeze out of it. Yeah. And so it's really, uh, it's really hard. It's, it's what I'm hard. getting at. I, was, I, I try yeah. feel you. And I was just just pumped up because uh, to me, when I when I first started that sock, that whole goal, the biggest goal, obviously, I wanted to get a turkey out of it, but the bigger goal was like, can I actually stock within range? Because yeah. I've never, like I said, I've never done. And given the turkey's eyesight and how paranoid those suckers are, I'm like, this this will be fun. And so to be able to get in that range was cool. But looking back and knowing what I know now and having that experience, like, okay, once I get there, I need to slow it down. Um, and really, really invest the time to get oh, within that yeah. quality range. And And I don't know how else you really, really learn that lesson. I don't I, see the thing is, yeah. is I don't you just know, have to go do it. I don't think that it would work for someone to be like, hey, once you get really close, you, yeah, or once you because oh, Steve could have told me that all day long and I would have been well. Here's in. the thing you're thinking, like you just said, you're thinking just getting within like a, a reasonable range yeah. of these animals is so difficult, yeah. So you're thinking, if I can just get on that edge yeah. of what that I is, I can't tell you how many times I've seen turkeys. A quarter mile, half mile away down a road, they right. pop out. They see you. You see, you see them, and somehow they see you, and they're they're gone. Yeah, they're like, all right, we'll see you later, dude. So to get like within 20, 30 yards like that, right? Crazy. So then you then you go, well, why would I push my luck? Yeah. So then you just fling an arrow yeah. and push so, your luck. So fling um, an arrow. So that and do you have any more to add to that? First, as far as lessons. Yeah, lessons. Yeah, I like to say just getting closer. You know, slowing down everything was that. For that was that was probably the biggest part. Um, nice. Are we still talking about turkeys? Or what are you still talking about turkeys? <laughs> 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 that was not an innuendo, you pervs. Uh, um, now I have to label this episode <laughs> explicit. I'm sorry. It was, yeah, it was anyway. now my mom's not gonna listen. Uh, moving on. Um, okay. Should I go? Should I try this? Should I try to? Um. Yeah, I think. Are you sure? Because I'm, I'm whatever so, you got left. Okay, so I got on one me. more Keep thing. Coming. Keep so coming. the one thing about trad bow shooting God, that I've so discovered, douchey. That's just your it's judgment. It's so much easier than traditional, though. Traditional. Yeah. Traditional. Traditional trad bow. Yeah. The one thing, the one joy I discovered about doing that was stump shooting. Oh my goodness! You shoot stumps. You're, you're looking at me with a weird look, weirder than normal. So <laughs> what? So so stump shooting. So you get like these these like cool little heads that like have like claws. Okay. And yeah, you find like rotten stumps, and you can shoot at them. Like you can be walking through the woods and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna take a pot shot at that." It is the funnest thing ever. Like that made up the like the whole week and like that afternoon when we weren't seeing anything, we weren't getting anything later that afternoon. Like I was just so having fun stump shooting, shooting at freaking stumps. Like it was <laughs> awesome. Like this how have I never known this before? Like this oh, is just gosh. amazing. You can't do this with a compound. So, you must have had to been there. <laughs> I was I was it was maybe it was just me trying to come. No, you know what? To be honest, like when I'm out in the when I'm out in the field, I'm just like, man, I just want to let an arrow fly. Just like for Dude. just like for practice, whatever. Like I do bring a I can I, do that. I do bring a field tip with me. So like yeah. if I really am like, uh maybe but it's more like did I really just bump my sight or did I really yeah. just mess something up? Yeah. Then shoot at something, you yeah. know, in the um, in the dirt and just but it's a, but for fly. me, like, like it was fun because, like, I could, like, we walk along, I'm like, oh, there's a stump, pull an arrow, let it fly. It, it doesn't matter what yard or yardage I'm at. I'm like, 
And that was the one thing I was like, this is a lot of fun because it, it's also really good practice at learning how to judge where to hold. Uh, there's something about shooting in the field, though, that's so invaluable. Oh, it's... Because I noticed for me, and this is where it's like shooting dailies just needs to be something that happens. Yeah. Where I just, even like you said, we were talking about earlier before, this was like even two or three shots a day. Yeah. Because I noticed like I warm up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where yep. it's like... And then I start getting in this group. I'm like, dang, now I can just put it anywhere I want. <laughs> but then, but it's like the first shot's I mean, the only one that usually matters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, that was like six I know some people. Right. Some people subscribe to that 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 thinking that every day they'll go out one shot, and they'll find their effective yardage by what's what's the longest distance I can go out with that with a cold shot, placing in the kill zone. I like that. So something for right. you to try. Right. Well, how big do you think is a kill zone on a deer? On a deer? But yeah, like if much bigger than a turkey. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, uh, probably not three yards though. Oh uh, yeah. Conference. Okay. Hmm. All right. Are we ready to move on to the? Yeah. So I think that yeah, that was my weekend. You Dude. know, we saw lots of turkeys. Had lots of action. I got to fling a few arrows. Gosh. Put on <laughs> a stock. Learn how to st- the joys of stump shooting, and enjoyed some really good beer. There's some really good beer. Um, yeah, that I enjoyed. That so. people make, yeah. Um, so I'm glad you have some extensive, uh, some extensive time in the field because, <laughs> anyways, I went out this morning, everyone, <laughs> and, and it in, was in the, in the, phenomenal. In the sunny weather and high Dude, of 75. So <laughs> turns out, turns out, everybody, just because they're called thunderbirds doesn't <laughs> mean that you should hunt them in the thunder in the thunderstorms see i thought it would make it easier therefore i went out and was all confused why four people declined to come out with me but i was like shocking well, yeah here's the thing though what's what people don't want to go hunting in 42 dude, degree weather and here, thunderstorming there's what's the quote like any day that you can get out hunting is a good day it's something along those lines something yes i, I fully on, i fully it's on, it's on I your pillow fully subscribe to that where it's just like any day I can afford to go, I it's a it's a good day to be out hunting. And because I went out, all right. So my season started on when? Oh my gosh, what day was it? Yeah, it was the day after, oh, I, got, after I got back. So Wednesday, it, it it was uh Saturday morning that it worked out that I was able to make it out. And I went out thunderstorms. I decided. Uh, that I would wear my rain jacket under a sweatshirt. Under a sweatshirt. Yeah. Why why, why did you wear the rain jacket under the sweatshirt? Because this the sweatshirt was camouflage. Was the sweatshirt cotton? No, the sweatshirt wasn't. Okay. The shirt but, underneath the But your undershirt was cotton. Yeah, but I was wearing a waterproof thing, so then it should be good. <laughs> <sighs> we need to work on that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so work on your I don't have a great layer. I don't have a great layering system if anybody wants to donate to ethan he can use uh everything upgraded layer <laughs> clothing <Gosh. laughs> i'm not above charity <laughs> okay um so you guys i was i was amped so there it was just downpouring rain all morning long i went out before light obviously um and i was like okay here's what i'm gonna do i had made this plan um kind of before i knew obviously what the weather was gonna be <laughs> but i went out and the plan was to sit on this uh travel corridor that i at least seen them go on and seen a bunch of scratching up and down this thing and it was kind of like an ambush atta- attack where it was there's this berm okay. um that went up to these filtration ponds i believe there and so i was kind of like just sitting off to the side of that a bit and so i knew they came down on the uh what would it be it would be the that would be the south side of it. So they're coming from the, they're coming from the south, headed north, and I was um, more towards the west side of it. Yeah, just around the corner. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to sit here for a couple hours this morning. And my limited knowledge is uh, they're going to roost longer. They're not going to make a lot of noise, if at all. And so it's just going to be basically still hunting. Yeah. So um, I hunker down. And I get drenched. I lose feeling in my hands. It's like 40 <laughs> degrees and it's just drenched to the bone. I'm like, okay, well, this has been a ton of fun sitting here. And didn't hear anything, didn't see anything, did some calling without very high hopes. And <laughs> good thing there wasn't super high hopes. And I was like, okay, well, I know where their, their uh, roosts are. And I'm on the top of this real, um, I think it's probably like 100 
maybe 120 yards to the bottom of this this riverbed. Okay. And so there's all these all sorts of ridges and um, things like that, kind of that I'm at the top of. Okay. And so I was like, I'm, I'm going to start walking ridge lines and just calling in the woods, and work my way um, back to this um, this pipeline. Okay. And so I'm walking through the woods. I spook some deer. I see scratching all over the place. I know there's a few trees where they roost just from uh, seeing like the mound of crap on the ground. <laughs> uh, Scott. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I keep working my way back and I'm like, all right, well, right before I get to the pipeline, my trail camera's there. So I'm like, all right, I'll check that on my way. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to stay warm at this point because I can't feel my fingers. And, like, were, you, were, you, were you turkey hunting or were you checking trail cams? So while I was mm. out there, while I was out there, um, it was yet to be decided whether I was shed hunting. <laughs> Did you find any sheds? Uh, didn't find sheds. Then just, you weren't shed hunting. Yeah. So while well, there's a reason I'm saying I'm turkey hunting, that's the whole, that's the low key hint to everybody. So I'm a... Uh, I'm getting towards the end of my shed hunting. I'm going to start turkey hunting shortly. <laughs> and and uh, I'm following these trails, and I'm finding all sorts of blinds everywhere. And I'm like, they're really old. So anyway, okay. total side note. Uh, and I get to my trail camera. I look at my trail camera. It's been out there for like a month, and there's 26 pictures. So I'm like, whatever. I'm not going to look at this because <laughs> I can't feel my hands. I'm just like, forget it. And so I'm almost out to the pipeline. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to glass down this, um, down this, this uh, long embankment here. And I glass, and I see this uh, Jake working his way to the top. Nice. And I just at this point, there's like zero standard. I'm like, <laughs> if it's legal, just excited it's, to see dude, something. I was like, okay, now I'm turkey hunting. First of all, <laughs> second of all, if I can, I'm like so amped that I was like, oh, I'm out here, and like I felt so validated. I was like, <laughs> I came out in the weather where nobody wants to hunt turkeys, and it's freezing cold downpouring rain you don't hear anything all morning and i found a turkey and so i saw this turkey and it's working its way up the hill and it maybe had like 30 or 40 yards left to go before it was going to crest the top of this hill and then it was just gonna be flat yeah and so as soon as i see it i'm like i gotta figure out a way to like make this happen yeah like, i'm gonna, gonna make a move. To i'm gonna the, make to a the... move and so i just duck str- like he didn't see me or anything so i book it just straight up the hill and i get where I can't see down the hill at all. Yep. So he's not crested the hill yet. And I run across and there's kind of this four wheeler trail and I'm like, just like throw my backpack off and like get everything off. And I sit down and, and while I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm so not confident in this spot <laughs> right now. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm just, I have my bow. I, there's barely any cover and I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, my only hope is like to be really still. So I'm like kind of, I'm sitting where I'm going to shoot across my body to the left. Yeah. As you're drawing the bow when you're sitting, it's really, e- it's a lot easier than straight ahead. Right. Yeah. So I'm turning my head and I mean, like I, I couldn't believe how fast he crested the hill. Like I wasn't sitting in that spot for more than probably 45 seconds before yeah. he was on top of the hill. Jeez. And I was like expecting it to be like a five, 10 minute wait. And hopefully he would come up. Like, yeah. I didn't know if he was going to go somewhere else. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, he's there. And so I'm looking over and he's coming, he's, he's working his way towards the, the clearing, which is about 20 yards. Okay. Um, Did you range find via, it? Via range finder. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it's this four wheeler trail. That's the opening. Everything else is just brush to my left. Yeah. And then it goes back to brush on the other side. So it's like a, probably like a three yard opening maybe where I'm going to have a clear shot and he's working right along the wood line, like right where I need him to be. So he crests the hill. I see him. He's working down. He gets about like, I don't know, like 10, 10, 15 yards, like closer to the trail. And then for whatever reason, I'm not calling or anything because I'm like, I'm just going to let him do his natural yeah. thing here. And for whatever reason, he starts working like diagonally away from me. No. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like if he goes in the opening yeah. at diagonally at like 30, I'm like, I th- like I'm pretty confident I can do that. <clears throat> And so I'm like waiting for him to go, and he just like this diagonal starts to be like a ninety, and so I start like I'm just like I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hunt anymore this this uh, <laughs> this season. So I'm like like trying to start to, that was my cluck. Uh, so I start trying to like cluck at him and like call, and he starts like zigzagging like back and forth, and I don't know if this is like because I could hear him yeah. clucking as well, and I don't know if that's like a nervous thing or if that's something that would be. 
So like it's part of like the learning process here. So I don't know if that's like a nervous thing where he's like keeps looking like from either side of his head. I don't yeah. know, but he started zigzagging like he was like unsure. Yeah. Because he wasn't really getting further away. He was just kind of kept zigzagging back and forth yeah. and fr- like from side to side. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And so my super smart self got <laughs> aggressive on the calling, which is like, he's not even that into what you're doing already. <laughs> so maybe don't we'll do put that. a little more juice on it. Yeah. And so then um so he ends up working his way across the pipeline, way out of range. Um, and then I'm like, well, whatever. Like, he gets behind this big tree, and I'm like, just try to make up as much ground as fast as I can <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, last ditch effort. And uh, he ends up flying away. So that was, I mean, Duh. that was my encounter, dude. That was it. And it was it was really cool. And like I said, like, I felt really good that I went out. And either way, I would have felt good. But being like it's a good day no matter what the weather is. It's like, if you can get out there, like the birds are out there yeah, um, and they're not going to sit in their roost all day. Yeah. So if you know, I have the, where I'm hunting and I have the opportunity not to be in the thick woods all yeah. the time. Yeah. And so I was able to glass it up and then make a move and it just didn't pan out. But Hey, you, you learned something. Yeah, I did. I did. I learned a, a few things. <laughs> <laughs> tough, tough lessons. You need to work on your uh, sexy turkey calling. That's Dude, what you yeah. need to work on. Oh, uh, and if I can go back to your point about like the stocking with uh, with your tread bow yeah. there. Um, so I had talked about how I had bought a fall turkey license because like, we have those in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. We have them in Minnesota too. Dang it. Yeah, sorry. I was hoping we were better than you. Yeah. Yet the only again. thing better is your, your football team. Which I'm a fan of the Green Bay Packers. So yeah, he's in GOT. You know that Aaron Rodgers, uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. probably heard of a little show. Yeah. Moving on. <sighs> um, no, what was so to your point about the stocking? Yeah, is I had like belly, like I, had, I remember I, I just had the tag with me because I was okay. like, oh, I see these turkeys like every night. I may as well bring a tag, like buy a tag. It's not yeah. that expensive. And I bought a tag, and I remember belly this, crawling. This is it. in the fall. This was in the okay. fall. Yeah, and it was like I, I was only. It's like if there's an opportunity, I'll go for yeah. it. Yeah. Well, one time I was really headed out early to the deer blind, like really early. And so I was like, if I see turkeys, I'll like try to do something. And I remember like trying to crawl with my compound bow, like through grass and just everything catching on everything. And then on top of that, rage broadheads with those little stupid collars <laughs> that keep popping. So I have to like. What? S- rage? Stupid? No. And then, oh my gosh, so. <laughs> Never mind the fact that we sit like dude. It's so basic, like, so basic, like a dude, mile away rage. from Faradine in the Rage Production <laughs> headquarters. It's so, ba- <laughs> it's so basic of you to hate on Rage. Uh, so, so anyway, but I just the whole point of that. Thank you very much. Was to relate <laughs> to your story about in terms of like it's really really difficult to actually like stock on yeah. the ground and like belly crawling like yeah. fifty to sixty yards yeah. up to a tree. And then their eyesight is like unparalleled. Oh, that's the thing is like I I think that bird, I don't know what it was. Yeah, but I did not feel like it was its natural path to just cut across like that. Okay, I've seen them just work that entire line all the way down. Yeah. So like when he crested that hill, like I don't know what it like. There was some movement, which I don't doubt there was. <laughs> like it must have just picked up on him and been like, oh, just not interested, not yeah. interested in learning anything. Like I don't want to be around anything I don't already know. <laughs> so it was. Dude, it was exciting though. That was, it was. Legit. Hey, at least you get to see something on the one Dude, morning yeah. you got to go out. Yeah, that's what was super exciting to me. It's like, well, it wasn't a total waste. Hey, you learned something. You're either yes. winning or you're learning. Yeah, yeah. And you're learning. Yeah, as I, I was do. for the third straight year in a row. So you you learn more from the losses, they say, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. How painful it is. Yeah. Man, so. Yes. I guess for our listeners, man, if anybody out there has actual experience hunting turkeys, especially with a a compound or a recurve or any kind of archery or just hunting in general, Mm -hmm. man, let us know your thoughts. Let us know what's worked for you. What are some things that you've really found good success with? Because these two newbies here, we, we could use a lot of help. You know, this is the the turkey game is something that I mean, I'm year three and I feel like this last year was finally the first year where like I or this year I finally started like learning how to turkey hunt. Like just barely learning. It's it's a tough one. Yeah. Those 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 thunder chickens are uh yeah, they're well and that you know what? What's interesting too though is like 
I think there's a ton to learn from the people who are even the people who with shotguns because you're you're pretty much working within the same range. No, I can't. Learn you from don't. People. Nothing. I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have all love for all hunters. Yeah, and, so. and 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 so like I even I have some buddies who have turkey hunted for quite a long time, and he's tried spot and stock and a few other things, and it's just like. Th- even because we're such a, and especially for me, being like the first actual, like intentional turkey hunt, yeah. Um, there's a lot to for me to actually pick up on any aspect of yeah. turkey hunting, and so um, I think we should get somebody on. We, just we should. Just saying. We should see before we the season's totally on. gone. It's pretty much gone. Yeah, it's gone. We got this fall though. We do, yeah. yeah. You know, we might be turkey hunting, we might be deer hunting. We it depends on what we walk out of the woods with. Yeah. <laughs> or we're scouting. <laughs> Dude, you know what? Okay. I'm gonna just fly from the hip. All and right. We may just totally cut this out if it just totally bombs. But we gotta have some sort of like we gotta have some sort of a topic that is just it is it is hot and nobody wants to talk about it or nobody wants to take a stance on it, or people take a stance on it and it's just like you're one or the other. Rage broadheads. Are you serious? You want to go know. into it? Broadheads. Broadheads? Yeah. We, we should someday, we should talk about broadheads. Oh, I think we will okay. be talking about broadheads. Yeah. I think we both just got a couple packages of broadheads. We do. Uh, yeah. The same We've one. seen what, uh, twinsies. How, the, how they, uh, how they, uh, fly so far. So, anyhow, we'll save that. We'll save that for a future podcast. That sounds good. Yeah. That could be a thing of itself. Yes. So, Ethan, people want to find us to drop. Their thoughts, comments, concerns oh about gosh. our hunting. Um, you guys have lost where it. Where can they reach out to find us? Yeah, if you guys want to let Dustin know that he <laughs> needs a range finder, <laughs> you can find us at Facebook, Venator Chronicles. And we got a community group there, right? Yes. And so everybody can post and talk about, post yes. pictures, whatever it is, or just yes. questions, general questions. It's where um, you can post links to Amazon for where Ethan can find good underlayers. Oh my gosh, that sounds so petty compared <laughs> to having a rangefinder. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, and then we have our Venator Chronicles cool. podcast page, uh, Instagram. You can find us on there, um, and YouTube, of course. Uh, and then, you know, if you guys are listening to this, you know, it's on iTunes and Podbean. So cool, and and YouTube for that matter. And YouTube, yeah, man. Well, it's been fun. It's been good catching up, dude. It has been. It's been awesome. And uh, till next time. Till next time, dude. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace Peace out.